this time we have here with Alex from Rad Titan, and we had to ask him a bunch of questions because he's been doing so much running around, convincing to convincing, and we thought no one better to ask about the entire you know collectors community and how it goes doing these things. So to start off with, what inspires you and George to do the work that you do on a constant okay. basis? Well, um, Gio and I have been doing the channel for um, around five and a half years. Uh, we kind of started the channel as, it started as a bit of a joke. And it was a bit like, okay, um, I, I bought a few pieces, Gio asked me to do a video and I, I did three videos. I uploaded them to YouTube. Um, it, it was a bit of a, a, a joke way of doing it. It wasn't very serious. And I put them up there and all of a sudden they started to get a few views. Uh, we started to buy more and more pieces and uh, we decided we were going to give it a go. Uh, we were going to try and actually do more reviews. They were getting more comments and it just kind of, it grew and it grew and it grew. And uh, then we started like the Facebook group. We started a web page, which we don't really use at the moment, but the web page, it's all for social media. And it, it just goes up and up and up. And the main thing about it is uh, we are super passionate about the collecting. We love collecting. Uh, you know, we, we, we actually have owned a lot of pieces in, in a short amount of time. And um, while we continue to be passionate about it, while we continue to enjoy it, we'll continue to do the channel, we'll continue to do the reviews. So, you know, yeah. No stopping. No stopping no us yet. Stop. Until, I mean, once, uh, if it feels like a job or it starts to lose its excitement, then um, we'll, we'll call it a day. We'll say goodbye. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll leave. Uh, but at the moment, we're having too much fun. We, we love doing this, and we love uh, meeting the people, conventions, uh, all of this. I mean, it, it's uh, such a great community, you know. So. Okay, so you've seen all of the collectibles here, right? Yep. What are your standout pieces? Okay, let's say what's your standout piece from XN Studios this time round? Okay. Um, I have to say that I saw the um, alien piece. And I saw it in Thailand probably, it must have been two months ago, a month ago. It was unpainted and I kind of, uh, I looked over the piece. I literally, I did a video and it was literally like, okay, here's the, pr uh, here's the alien, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, here's the printer. It looks awesome. And I kind of like, I, I kind of didn't really give it a time of day. Um, it wasn't engineered properly, so it had all these like uh, wooden dowels holding it up. And it, it, to me, it just looked a bit crap. Um, I then saw that painted. Uh, it was painted by a Thai uh, studio called Golf Studios. And I saw they actually painted the Predator as well. And I looked at it and I was just like, wow. It literally uh, blew me away. I literally saw it and I was just like, I keep making excuses not to buy big pieces. I look at it and I like, this won't go in my cheap IKEA cabinet. I'm not gonna buy it. And then I saw this alien and I was like, where can I put it? Where, where can I make space for this? Um, so that's probably one of the bigger end pieces. Obviously, the uh, we're standing next to the uh, Finch. Um, what's this called? The uh, Batman Sanity. So we're standing next to this piece. This piece is like uh, super, super impressive. And I think it's something that XM Studios are kind of like uh, taking it to the next level. Um, this has pretty much all of the Batman villains on there. Obviously, there's no uh, Riddler, there's no uh, Ra's al Ghul, and there's a few other characters that are missing. But I think that this, if you are a Batman fan, this is a way that you can have all these characters together in one statue. And it's not totally undisplayable. I think it's uh, 64 centimeters tall. Um, while, while we're talking about it, the only thing I don't like is I don't like Bane. I think it's in a bit of a weird position. And maybe they should change. Actually, sorry, they said that they were looking to change Bane for Clayface. But they said that if Bane was here, that would be awesome. But if Clayface was down here, he would look like a pile of shit. So it didn't work. Um, then if I look at the other pieces further down, Hulk transformation, wow. Uh, Red Hulk, uh, Gio and I are huge fans of uh, Aaron Ray Perez, a traditional sculptor from Mexico. We've been following him for four years and uh, we ha we've seen every piece he's made so far. So seeing this, uh, seeing XM collaborate with Aaron, we were we were super impressed and we're really happy for Aaron. Uh, wish him all the best of luck. Um, then you go over to HMO, um, 
I don't really know much about the uh, 40k stuff, uh, the Warhammer, but I love the face on the guy who's looking up. He has like a skull face. I love the look of that. It's a bit of a shame it's a bit hidden away, um, but that piece looks awesome. Um, and also the base, the detailing of the marble steps, all of the kind of sand, and there's just so much going on there that if you are a 40k fan, uh, Warhammer, you're gonna absolutely love it. Um, obviously the um, uh, Morrigan was there. I've actually just had my shipping note from Oregon and uh, I saw her again uh, yesterday, today, and I cannot wait to unbox her and see her. She's stunning, she's beautiful. She's probably one of the best female pieces out there. Um, if you've seen a hundred pictures of her, um, she's probably not as good as you've seen in pictures. And then there's also like a, an illusion when you kind of look at her kind of down and looking forwards and it's like a, the rocks on the base make a skull. And that's really, really clever as well. It's a nice uh, little Easter egg there. Uh, then you go over to so Royal Sangala, uh, the pewter company. Um, I have to say for us, the Thanos, um, George just picked that up. So we're going to be reviewing that when I get home. Uh, it's kind of like posed like this. If you're watching this and you saw Sideshow post about the um, Thanos, they messed up the price. They originally posted it as 999. It's actually 700 now. So if you looked at it originally and it was too expensive, it's actually uh, $200, oh, sorry, $300 cheaper than they originally posted it as. So maybe check it out because I don't think that price is bad for what you're getting. It's solid it's, uh, and it's very expensive to produce. Uh, Legendary Beasts. Legendary Beasts. <sighs> I'm, an, uh, I'm a little disappointed with some of their stuff. I, I think the uh, one third Captain America needs a lot of work. I think if you had the Captain America, um, the positioning of it, the pose, the style, it's very much like a Prime One Arkham piece, and that's kind of what you would pose with it. If you posed it with a Prime One Arkham piece, it is going to look like a pile of crap, and it needs a lot of work done. It almost looks like a custom from five years ago. The paint job is shoddy, the anatomy is shoddy, and it, it just doesn't look right. It, it need, they need to go back and Maybe they rushed it to get it through for the convention, but they need, they need to work on it. I think the piece that probably has the most potential for me, um, I, would, I want to see the Spider-Man. I want to see the Spider-Man painted, and I want to see what that looks like. Uh, Juggernaut, I think, needs some details uh, added to the base, because it's all just, at the moment, brown suit, brown rocks, brown wood, brown dirt, and it's, it's like 50 shades of brown. Uh, so it needs something to break it up a little bit. Uh, anyone else? Is that? Uh, That's Hot Toys, but I don't really know about Hot Toys. Right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the DC 1-6 line? Okay, the DC 1-6 line from XM Studios actually surprised me. Um, I don't really collect 1-6, neither does Geo. Geo has a couple of old bone pieces. Um, we've seen the Joker several times at several conventions, and in my mind, I always envisioned it to be really big, uh, the base, and I actually thought it was going to be a bit undisplayable. Um, seeing it now, it's actually not that bad. And I think you can actually get it from, um, I think they're called GX uh, in America, and I think they sell it for $479. I don't think that's bad at all uh, for what you're getting. I think the uh, quality of the, the face sculpts, uh, the Wonder Woman face sculpt, actually all of them, all of them have really, really good face sculpts. Um, my favorite one of the five, so I've got them in front of me, that's why I'm looking over there. Uh, if I had to get one of them and display just one of them, I'd probably say the Superman. I think the Superman is such a classic pose. They've done a really good job with the sort of icy crystal look of the Fortress of Solitude. Um, yeah, and I, 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 think, I think there's potential, definitely potential. And I do think there are a few companies now looking into the 1.6 market as a way to uh, expand because other companies have a monopoly over the quarter scale licenses. So maybe there is a future in that scale. So a major part of the collector community are still only discovering XM now, yeah. right? So what do you think, uh, where do you think yeah. the companies from Asia stand in terms of the companies that already exist out there? Are they upping the bar or where do they stand? Okay. <coughs> 
I think in the past you've had like a pure dom do dominance of um, like American companies. Um, they've they've controlled the whole market. Uh, Sideshow collectibles have been around for a hell of a long time. Uh, they've been making collectibles for 25 years. They've been making statues for probably 15 years, and um, they've dominated the market. They control most of the licenses, and I think that um, with that in mind, I think that there were there was a period probably about five maybe four or five years ago where they got a bit complacent they got a bit like they controlled the market they owned the market they literally had all the licenses so what would happen is they would release a piece and that was the only piece you could buy of that statue for eight years there was only one quarter scale venom and that was all you could buy so for that they had that control the aftermarket was a bit crazy for their products um, I think with more competition I think it's great, uh, if, if it's the Asian market or if it's anywhere else. And I think that with the quality of uh, XM Studios, we're big fans. Um, obviously, if you look at their first pieces to their pieces now, they've come a long way in five years. Their first pieces like their Hulk, uh, She-Hulk, um, you know, some of the ones like that, they've expanded a hell of a lot since then. And you look at now, you know, the Hulk transformation, uh, you know, you look at the Rocket, the Brute, all of that stuff and they I think they push the bar and I think that helps to um, help other companies improve what they're doing and also like you know uh, what's the term uh, iron sharpens iron so if you have a company that's strong and another company that's strong they'll they'll go between them trying to push the bar and that's only only good for collectors in the future so it's only going to help us uh, one of the problems we do have at the moment is there is an oversaturation so uh, one of the, the one of the things there is um, we didn't see any SNK pieces and all of a sudden you have like five companies releasing SNK at the same time. I think that that is a problem. Uh, there's not really going to be any more exclusive licenses uh, and now every company seems to get a license and maybe they should look into more putting it that it's a year for this person or two years for that and uh, giving it a few more exclusivity so that there's not an oversaturation in the market. I think. So, um, sorry, one sec. Sorry, I, I, are you going to be over there? Okay. Are you going to be over here? Yes. I'll meet, I'll meet you by the coffee place. Um, he said, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Long way, long way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Brian, Brian's waiting for you there. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um, I'm on my way now. I mean, it's a long way. It's all through all the halls. It's not a long way. It's like uh, 150 meters. 150 meters? Yeah, it's like over there. <laughs> yeah, let me I'll finish this. I don't even want to check the cable because he kicked it. Just right. finish and then uh, tell me where it is because... I yeah, yeah, literally just walk straight. The next one. Uh, so what factors do you think the companies that manufacture these stat statues start to... I mean, they need to consider now, going ahead, to keep the com uh, collector's community happier. Yeah. I know it's hard to make every customer happy. Sure. But what are the factors that are most important now? Okay. I think that um, collectors are very spoiled now. We've had so much choice over the, again, I'm going to go over the last five years. We've seen um, an increase in new companies. We've seen an increase in the fan art market as well. Um, I'll just touch on that a little bit. I do think there is a place for the fan art market. I think that it has helped to um, develop some of the companies and kind of push the boundaries to what actually can be delivered. Some companies have been saying that this can't be made because it can't be engineered. This can't be done because of this. And then we see a fan, a fan art company making it and producing it. And it kind of like pushes then the company to uh, expand on what they're doing. But that in mind, um, it is not fair to compare fan art and companies because obviously the fan art, they don't have the licensing restrictions. They can do what they want and they don't have to keep going back and forward for approval. So it is really unfair to, to say this fan art piece versus this um, uh, license piece. It's not fair in that way. They're di different, different, uh, different planes that they play on. Um, so I think now also we've seen a, a huge increase in the, uh, the details on the statue, the paint quality, the sculpt, uh, digital sculpting now. They can do so many texturing. You can like the hairs on the arms. If you look at some of the old Wolverine, uh, the XM Wolverine old one, 
it looks like fish scales. It looks really, really bad. You look on the Weapon X now, and it, it looks amazing. It looks really, really good. So texturing's come a long way. Paint's come a long way. And I think that with uh, the choice, we don't have to settle for things, and that's pushing companies to develop it more. So yeah, I think that uh, importance for that is. Sorry, let me go back. Sorry, the uh, yeah. So the important things for collectors, I think now is uh, quality and uh, availability. So yeah. one of the problems with XM is um, they're not worldwide distribution for their Marvel license, but many collectors want their Marvel license. Unfortunately, XM can't sell and they don't sell. But they have resellers here who buy up everything and resell it, so everything becomes double the price. Um, with that in mind, that puts people off buying XM. Uh, we may see that XM will get more customers with the DC line being worldwide, uh, Top Cow being worldwide, and I think some more in the future. So hopefully that will help them expand uh, for us. So yeah. Did I answer the question? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So I think you even covered uh, the question. I was going to ask you about the future of collectibles, right? Yep. I think you covered that a bit, or do you have anything to add to that? future collectibles I mean I think that there is there, there's a bubble and um, I think that what happened was is there was a time where you could buy a collectible and uh, your investment would be safe you could resell it and make a hundred dollars and it'd be safe and I mean that's not the reason why you should buy I'm not saying that I buy things to sell them I'm not buying things to make money but it's a lot of money to invest in and you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow it could be that Oh, God forbid that you know someone goes into hospital and you have medical bills, so you have to sell. Obviously, you don't want your product to to drop. Um, with that in mind, there are so many things available that, <laughs> unfortunately, or fortunate for collectors, that uh, you can wait. Uh, there's a time there you can wait till the aftermarket, and a lot of things are going to be cheaper. That is why XM Studios have done the made to order. And if you look at pieces like Darth Maul, it's a 270 edition size. That is ridiculous for that piece. That piece is insane. Um, so that piece, they're, what they're trying to do is to protect the collectability for collectors. Uh, Scorpion's 300. I think Moon Knight is either 280 or 300. So they're protecting that investment for the collectors. And uh, I think that's a good thing to do. Uh, other companies, they'll do 6,000. And yeah, you can buy it cheaper afterwards. So. I think that's a concern, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to wait to buy those. So, yeah. so I'm sure there are going to be a lot more reviews and a lot more conventions leading up. Yeah, to well, you. we've uh, you know we're busy all the time, and literally, if we were to say, "I'm going to quit. I don't want to do this anymore. We're going to stop. See you later, guys. Have a good time." If I edited all the videos I had of reviews and I posted one a week, you're still going to see a video a week for a year. I have literally about 50 videos waiting to be edited. So, yeah, there's no, uh, if you don't like us, I'm, I'm sorry, we're not going anywhere. If you love us, awesome, we'll see you, uh, we'll keep seeing you, but we have no intention of going anywhere. Um, I'm going to be in New York Comic Con, uh, London Comic Con, and uh, a few other Comic Cons coming up. So, yeah, you're going to see lots of me and lots of coverage. So, yeah, if you uh, if you haven't subscribed to Rad Time, check us out. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. We are here because of you guys as well. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you.